every kid has a right to have the skills and confidence to tell their story. So we run a whole range of free creative writing and storytelling programs to help them express themselves and talk about the world around them. What makes our programs different perhaps is that we run them with lots of volunteers. Um, so we need to have it somewhere where volunteers can access and where there are kids in need because we work with marginalised young people. So in Redfern you kind of get that mix, you get um, people who really want to help and it's easy to get to with the train station and you get kids who really need help as well. Creativity can, is hard to measure and it's difficult to, teachers can often find it difficult, there are lots of teachers trying really really hard to run really creative programs and many of them do. Um, but in a curriculum it can be hard to program creativity and it's something that people can be scared of. So we try and kind of carve out a space for kids to really explore ideas and think differently because it's crucial to their future. You know, it's, um, the world is going to be very different when, uh, in 20 years time and kids have to be able to adapt and be flexible and be creative in their responses. Funding for schools has been created in this very ad hoc way over many years and has all kinds of anomalies and no real logic underpinning it. So the Gonski reforms are designed to give the money to the kids who need it the most. And it's not just spending money, you've got to spend money on the right things, but if you put the money where it is most needed, that's the first thing that's going to help change the, the outcomes for the kids. The kids who are Indigenous and from low socioeconomic backgrounds are two or three years behind their peers, and that's terrible. So we need to use all kinds of creative programs to address that. Redfern is full of fantastic stories about Aboriginal kids doing really, really well, and um, it is, it's so fantastic to see that happening, but the statistics tell us that there's still a really big gap, and I think, um, I think a lot of this, what is happening is people working Aboriginal communities coming up with their own solutions and working, you know, instead of people imposing programs on communities, trying to work with communities to develop the right programs and I think that is the way forward. There are lots of places, lots of places I think, doing that on small scales and larger scales. There's a really interesting program going on in Burke um, called Just Reinvest which is um, really about galvanising a whole community to work together to think about how do we solve all the problems that are happening here. And I think that's happening in Dubbo and I think it happens here. There's great things that happen in Redfern all the time where people in community here come up with really fantastic ideas about how to help solve problems. We're a little tiny organisation with no marketing budget and suddenly we were on TV so that was great and it really helped. It's helped bring in money and it's helped open doors and it just it's given us a bigger platform and it's meant that we this year we have we have worked with a lot more kids than ever before and so that's incredibly satisfying. We've got lots of new programs that we're running, particularly programs that we're running. We always run programs in Redfern, Waterloo around here, more in La Perouse down that way, Matraville, and more programs in Western Sydney and hopefully if we can manage it, more regional programs as well. Money is always the big roadblock and it's always the thing that's hard to find. Um, but, you know, we're trying hard, we'll, you know, we're, we'll, we know we'll be able to do something, you know, we, we know we'll be able to work with, you know, at least a few thousand kids, but, you know, we'd like it to be more if we could. Well, there are loads of kids I'm really proud of. Um, we had a launch the other night, uh, we've had nine kids working all year in our longest ever program to write a novella, and we launched those novellas the other night at a published area. Um, and it was, it was absolutely fantastic, you know, one of the boys lives around the corner over here and he would tell you that when he came to us he hated writing and he hated reading and now he's written a novella which is incredible, like that's an amazing achievement for anyone, whether how, no matter how old they are, but it's really amazing if you're 14. I think art's important in all communities but art has always been central to indigenous communities and telling stories, you know, like you talk to the kids around here, they're great at telling stories, you know, and I think... Um, the stories of First Australians have often been overlooked and not heard and part of what we are trying to do is give, give those kids a voice and to get them to tell stories about what matters to them and often um, those stories are about their own culture and things that are important and they're often sometimes they're about video games, you know, there are lots of different stories that they want to tell and they're all, um, whatever is important to them is important to us.